Okay, so I've messied up all of my edges. I actually kept medium brush with this pale pink on it and big brush with this pale yellow on it. You don't have to do this, um, but if I have two opposing colors, like a shade of pink and a shade of yellow on these brushes and I move quickly enough, I like to keep both brushes in my hands so that I can work on varying roses um, and let one color dry um, on a rose while I use the other brush. If you decide to keep um, a, uh, one of the shades that we're working with on one of the brushes um, and a different shade on the other brush, the only thing is make sure you have plenty of paint on the brush so that it does not dry out. Don't set it somewhere and forget about it. Um, I definitely do that. So um, I like to hold the brush I'm not using in my left hand so I don't forget about it, but I can still utilize the color on that brush um, and I don't have to clean the brush multiple times when I'm moving through a painting where I'm switching between the two shades rapidly. So we're going to start with either medium brush or big brush, whichever you're more comfortable with. And we're going to start with this pale pink color, the same pale pink color, the color that we um, painted the base of these two roses with. We're going to just begin adding some texture and shadow to our pale yellow roses. So beginning with the large one, we're going to use just a dabbing motion. It's going to be quick, it's going to be messy, not perfect. You're going to use a variation of the flat edge and the vertical edge of your brush. Let it be messy. Um, if this intimidates you, definitely, you know, you can practice on your palette. Um, just the brush stroke, we just want it to be very uneven, quick, making sort of just blobs of shapes. Don't worry about matching shape perfectly because this painting is very impressionistic. Um, just keep the color and the shadows to the rough general location that I do if you want your painting to look um, a bit more like the original. So we are going to begin with our large yellow flower. We're just going to dab at the canvas some shadow along the bottom, kind of curving up around the edges a little, like so. And my paint of my flower is still a little bit wet. That's perfectly fine. It's not the enemy as it was in the case with the background mixing with our flowers because these are all good colors. And we're going to add some deeper red to that light rose color. Maybe a little bit of yellow if you want to tone down the vibrancy of that red. And we're going to dab a little of a deeper rosy color just at the center. And maybe just a couple places where we dab the light pink. We're gonna take this darker pink that's on our medium brush and dab sort of around the middle in a loose spiral concept in the pale yellow flower to our left. Just dab randomly keep into a loose, very loose spiral concept, okay? We wanna leave a border of light yellow. We don't wanna have a big block of pink in our top flower here over on the left. We're gonna add just a little dab, random shape, just a couple of dabs in our pale yellow flower to the right. We're just going to do a backwards C around the outside here. Again, pause this video at any time if you want to go over these steps multiple times. Avoid the temptation to be too exact with your color here. It's actually going to be backwards E. We're going to come out a little in the middle there. Okay. Definitely get comfortable with using this brush stroke. It will free your style and it's very useful. Keep the pale pink one between these two deeper ones. We're going to do a little of a deep rosy color in the middle. If you find you don't have enough contrast between colors, go ahead and add more red. Don't ever add more black. Um, don't ever add black to darken a color. Um, just add the darker version of whatever color you mixed in. In this case, it's red. <clears throat> okay, so those are the shadows for our pale yellow and now we are going to toss in some of the highlights on those same pale yellow flowers. So I have this pale yellow on big brush. I'm going to add quite a bit more white 
just to what's on my brush, mix it in a separate spot on my palette. So now I have this pale yellow that's mostly white and I'm going to sort of go around the edges of where I put that deeper rosy color. If you find that your pale yellow doesn't have enough contrast, you can wipe off the excess on Big Brush and dip it straight in pure white and use that instead. If your paint is mixing too much with the flowers on the canvas, go ahead and just take a break, let them dry and come back. We're actually going to use this color on some of our rosy flowers as well. So we're going to start with that in this flower to the left, the pale pink, we're going to use the, I'm using the corner of Big Brush just so I don't cover the whole flower because it's a small flower. The bigger the brush, um, the less of it you're going to need. So we're just going to dab highlight again in a loose spiral concept. Roses are organized loosely as spirals or concentric circles. We're going to use that same just edge of Big Brush is what I'm doing, but you can use just the tip of medium brush if you're using medium brush. I'm using the edge, the corner of Big Brush, and just dabbing sort of an upside down sea of highlight along our pale pink flower here, like so. We're going to use a little curve on the left of this dusty rose flower on the right here. And just a curve around the middle that is going to sort of border our shadow. And then we're going to use paint in dabs of highlight on our middle rosy rose. <laughs> Again, in a loosely spiral concept. When you're using the spiral concept, just make sure you don't make one connected spiral. If you're moving your brush in a spiral shape, you can dab, skip a spot, continue the spiral, skip a uh, spot, and then continue the spiral. So you don't want a connected spiral. And then we're going to have some highlight just on the bottom edge of this rosy rose here. Then we're actually just going to have... So if we pretend like this rose right over here, this rosy rose, is facing this way, we're going to have petals like this. So we have the petals shaping this way, and this is the bottom of the rose here. We're going to put some highlight on where we might imagine those petals to be. And I will give a close-up um, of my final canvas on the last step of this so you can switch between the two. I realize it's a little bit of a hassle. Or you can look at the original, which I'm looking at as I paint this reproduction if you want to get a firmer grip on where the highlights and the shadows are. <clears throat> okay, so after that is finished, we may come back in with some more highlight, but you can move on to the next step.